very, very wonderful in terms of really sounding the alarm um, from a correction standpoint of we have to stop that. We need to stop spending billions over here and spend millions here instead of spending billions on the, on the, on the end side, on the end product, and on the outcomes. And so since I've been in the legislature, I've been a strong advocate of early childhood education. I, one of the first caucuses that I joined was the Early Childhood Education Caucus, um, which is bipartisan and bicameral. It's actually the largest caucus in terms of members in uh, the legislature. So there is bipartisan agreement around investing early in education. And the caucus every year advocates for an increase in the early childhood education budget. But what we know um, and that we didn't know before is, is how important it is that we invest early because we now know that 90% of what we learn is learned in those, in those early years. Uh, the brain is formed and, and we, we have the maps and the electrons and the neutrons and everything is connected so we know that, that all that happens early on. Um, I spent, I, I really care about the school districts in my, in my district so I spent um, actually two days ago before I knew I was coming here, I spent the day with the superintendent of the Upper Darby School District, um, Dr. Dunlap, who I think is amazing um, because he's implemented a program in the short time that he's here, that he's been there, um, K through two, to make sure that all of the children that come through the Upper Darby School District uh, are ready and, um, and on level by grade two because we know that if they're not by grade three, then that's when the, the education or the school to prison pipeline begins. Um, because the likelihood of them catching up at that point is very, very slim. Because on average, a child only progresses one and a half grade levels uh, on average per year, and so per, per academic year. So every year, if they're not even progressing to that point, then that means they're falling further and further behind. And then by middle school, the dropout rate is increasingly high. And then we know that if children don't finish high school, we know that their chances, 70%, are, are going to end up in prison. And what I found out at the kindergarten center, um, in a very real way, is the four historically underperforming groups. And we know who they are, but we're gonna, we're gonna mention them. The four historically underperforming groups are people of color, people who are economically disadvantaged, people who don't speak uh, English as their first language, and people with special needs. These are the four historically underperforming groups. And why are they historically underperforming? Because by the time they get to kindergarten, they're already behind. They don't have access to pre-K. They don't have access to education, so they're not ready to read. They don't know the vowel sounds and all that. They didn't have that background because they didn't speak English as a first language. So they learned their, their, their language of origin first. And, and, and so they come with that deficit to kindergarten. Or, or they didn't have the wealth in order to get to a pre-K program. I just remember myself, and somebody said I was MG or academically talented by the time I got to fourth or fifth grade. But I remember that my most important and most memorable educational experience was Head Start. I remember Head Start. Head Start had an tremendous effect on my life and my love of reading. And so that's where we need to start. That's where we need to start so you don't have this huge prison population that you have to manage and you folks all can all help with. We need to begin to invest in early childhood education so that the four historically performing, underperforming groups have access to quality pre-K education. And I will continue to be an advocate for that because every child deserves a high quality education regardless of income and regardless of zip code. And I get beat up for that position because I, I believe we need to try everything possible to make sure that kids who are historically underperforming have that opportunity. And I will continue to work with the secretary and anybody else that wants to fight for children and the right for them to have a high quality education and stay out of places like this. Thank you so much.